What's up guys, First Night here. Good morning to you all, depending on when you're watching this. And yes, this morning, again, next to the fire, in front of the brick fireplace, and uh, drinking some hot coffee. So today, we're going to talk about a topic that I mentioned in last video, which was the, uh, should you, as an entrepreneur, should you learn to code, or should you hire a software developer? I'll link that up right here. But today, we're going to talk about how to hire a software developer. So let's get into it. So if y'all watching have done any little bit of research, I'm sure you've stumbled across something like Upwork.com or Freelancer.com or whatever other freelancing sites are out there right now. I know some like have just merged to create Upwork.com, so I don't even know all of them that are out there right now. And that, going on those sites and getting people from there uh, may be risky for many of you people because you look at it, instead of spending $5,000 on a very good app, you're like, I can spend $500 and get the same app. Uh, it's not a true statement. You probably 99% uh, of the time based on uh, actual feedback from people I know who have used it as well as people who have used it and I've read like their reviews online uh, and they have no reason to be biased one way or another that it, you get what you pay for on those sites. If you're paying $500 for an app that should cost $5,000 or $10,000 or sometimes even more, you're not going to be that happy. It's going to be more of a headache for people. And on those sites, I've heard of people withholding the application after they've been paid until you give them a five-star review. So a lot of those reviews on the actual site are not so legible. People are just leaving five-star reviews for this freelancer or for this developer because they made them, essentially. But that's not the case for everybody. That's not the case for all developers on there. That's not the case for everybody looking to hire a developer from there. It's just something to keep in mind while looking for something. And I, one of the main points I want to point out in this video is for those of you who want to go on and say, I will give you 20% of my company if you build this app for me. It's an amazing deal. This is good that, you know, that 20% since this is gonna be at least a million dollar company, it's gonna be worth $200,000. That's more than you could ever dream of. Well, one, if you actually believed that it would be worth a million dollars, you would shell out two to $10,000 in order to save that $200,000, that 20% equity for yourself. You see what I mean? Also, that's not a good deal because I'm working all, all these hours for free I guess for 20% equity, but I don't know you very well. I don't know, uh, that's essentially me investing in you. I need to figure out you, I need to figure out your business model, I need to figure out everything, but a lot of people don't wanna give that away because they think that me as a developer, I'm gonna steal your idea. That may be true for some developers, but let me just say for me, I'm not gonna steal your idea and build it because I have a whole book of ideas that I care to implement for myself. I don't. I'm not going to implement your idea because I think I guarantee I think my ideas are better than yours. Not to be condescending towards you, it's just that's just me my way of telling you I would never steal your idea. And a lot of developers think that same way. So going about it saying even if it's not 20%, even if it's 50% plus, you can try, but if you have tried, you've probably noticed that that doesn't work out too well simply because of what I stated before. It's not uh that good of a deal to the software developer as it seems to the actual entrepreneur because they think they're gonna be building the next billion dollar app uh, when that's probably, I'm talking statistics here, not true. So now you're probably wondering, well, you know, I'm contacting these people, I'm trying to offer them part of my company, they don't wanna do that. Uh, you tell me not necessarily to use Upwork.com or at least if I do, be very wary of who I choose and I may be paying top dollar to get the best person there is, that's, you know, because sometimes there are also language barrier between people. The best person there is that ha speaks my language and that I communicate with well. Uh, but so what, what should I do? There's no other alternative, is there? Well, one, at face value, instead of offering those people 50%, you can offer them money. So that's one way to go about it. Or two, um, uh, I'm going to plug myself here. I hate to do it. Well, no, I don't hate to do it. It's business. In the middle, around May or June of 2018, you, maybe you're watching that, uh, maybe you're watching this video and it's May or June of 2018, I will start taking on clients to, for, for iOS development. And maybe uh, websites as well. I can create websites, it's just not my favorite thing to do. But for iOS development, 
maybe Android development as well. It just all depends. Just communicate with me if you care to have any software built for you. But that's one way to go about it. Look for people online, ask questions that only a software developer would know or an iOS developer, whatever application you want built, if it's for mobile, an iOS or Android developer, that they would know and be able to answer. And then those people are probably taking on freelance clients. So they're willing to do, uh, to build the application for you for money. It, I mean, that's how the world goes around, isn't it? So that's how you could find some of the good software developers. I know there are plenty of other iOS developers, web developers, Android developers on YouTube better than me, at least at this point in my life, better than me that you can check out and see how much, <clears throat> how much they charge, excuse me, how much they charge. And then if that's in your price range, go with it. They're, just look it up, look at, type in iOS freelance developer and you'll probably find some people. And now I'm thinking you may be considering hiring somebody, but you don't know how to go about it. One, I mentioned not many people are willing are wanting to steal other people's ideas, but you can just look up uh, NDA contract, which is non-disclosure act. Is that what that stands for? Essentially a non-disclosure where you tell me all of the stuff about your application, prevent that signing this prevents me from act actually going out and implementing your idea in my own name. So I'm not stealing your idea. If that makes sense. And something else to keep in mind is time difference. If you are in America uh, and you hire overseas, their time is going to be different than yours. If you want to make sure you're communicating with people throughout your actual workday, although when you're an entrepreneur or you're running a business, your workday is essentially all the time. But if you want to make sure things are correlated properly, your schedule and their schedule, theirs meaning the developers, uh, is aligned properly, then you have to make sure that they are in a similar time zone as you or that they work the same hours as you. You see what I mean? Otherwise, you may be seeing yourself get up at 4 a.m., if you don't you do that regularly, it'll be a hassle in order to communicate with that developer and kind of study what they did. They send you over a process and that's how you communicate is at a really odd time that you're not used to. So as far as the legality goes for it, you want to have a non-disclosure agreement. That's what it stands for. Non-disclosure agreement where the person can't steal your stuff. And if someone does steal your stuff, if you care to take action, make sure you're able to take action, meaning like I said, if they're in a whole different country, I have no clue how you would go about that. I, I don't know. But if they're in your own country, that's a little bit more simple. It's not fun, but it's more simple. And then when it comes to structuring, at least for me, what I think a good idea would be is to you know kind of split it up into four parts, maybe three parts or so, and either get somewhere between, or pay somewhere between 25 and 50% up front, because as a developer, I want that assurance. And then, you know, you pay 25% later and then 25% later. So it would either be 25% four times or 50% once and then 25% two times. And the last 25%, of course, being after you get the app delivered to you or delivered on the app store, whatever your agreement is at that point. So that's it. I kind of took you through a brief overview of how to go about hiring an iOS developer and how not to as well. So as a recap, you, f you locate the person, we discussed that. And then if you're really worried about them stealing your idea, do an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, and make sure that you're able to enforce that non-disclosure agreement based on their location, your location, and all that good stuff. And then the you know pay incrementally, 25 to 50% up front, and then 25% there on out until it's paid off in full, and that you make sure you have the application in your possession. You want to make sure you have the code in your possession and make sure that you keep in mind, if you want to have it on your own Apple account, that's an extra $100 a year that you have to have on your Apple developer account in order to have an application onto the App Store. If there's anything that you are curious about still in this process, because I know there's a lot more, ask me in the comment section below, because I may be familiar with what exactly you're going through and I'll be sure to answer that for y'all. And I also really hope you found something informative out of this video. You found something of value that you can apply to yourself. And if that is the case and you like the video, you made it through the video this long, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that tells me that you actually enjoyed the video. And also if you're into anything software development, entrepreneurial, because this channel is me tracking my journey from 
of learning iOS development and take that skill, build an iOS application, which is where I'm at right now. I'm in the middle of building that application and then turning that application into a legitimate business. A lot of people just build iOS applications, put it on the app store and pray it does well. No, we're gonna make sure we do marketing properly. We're gonna talk about that on this channel. We already have a little bit, but as we actually do it, we're going to talk about it more and more, just all the business side of things, the software development side of things. It's a journey and it's gonna be very informative for you guys. It's gonna be a learning process for me and I'm, I love making these videos because it helps me learn and it helps me spread the knowledge that I'm learning along the way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, have a good one.